and welcome back to the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show with me, Jana McCabe. And me, Rachel McGill. Rachel, we're back for another episode, but since our last one, there's been big news with there you. There has been. You've switched clubs yourself. <laughs> so right behind us, we've got a Cumber shirt, and now you're with, in my opinion, the best team about, Ards. Are you excited for it? I'm so excited. It's great to be part of a team that's just started and getting to play with all the girls there, yeah. You mentioned there that obviously Ards have just started their club. Like so many teams, they're brand new. Does that add a bit of the excitement factor that they've got no experience and you're going to be one of the first girls to play for them? Well, we heard from Valerie last time there's so many new clubs that have started up and to be part of you know a team that's just started at my childhood club, it's amazing. I think we both have such big ties to Ards that I yeah. feel very excited <laughs> as a friend for you that you're going to be playing for the Mighty Ards. That's enough from the two of us for now. We're delighted to be joined by our first get guest, football referee Arlene Campbell. Arlene, mm-hmm. it's great to have you. Thank How you. How did you first get involved in refereeing? Well, growing up, I always loved football. You're watching it every Saturday, and then I got intrigued by the referee. How does he get them decisions? How did they get that? You know, so through that. Never really played football when I was younger because there was no girls teams, but with cousins and friends and stuff like that, I did. It was actually a girl lived beside us, Claire Carson. Seen her growing up then. But watching their games, then I was like, no, I need to know more about this. So in 2014, I was in a car accident and um, left me partially paralyzed in my left leg. Um, I then went to need a challenge. So watching football in the hospital one Saturday, I thought, I'm going to find out more about refereeing. And I said to the nurse, and she was like, brilliant. So that's how I done it. 2017, then when I was back on my feet, looked into it, contacted the IFA, and they were like, yeah, we're doing a women's course. So that was it. That is just such a great story, the fact that you obviously had that accident. That Mm -hmm. must have been such a setback. How did you recover from that? Well, looking forward, you have things to strive towards. I had kids, um, and the boys playing football, needed me on a Saturday, needed me for training to take them there. And then it's like, right, I need to do something for me as well and got more then, wanted to be more involved then in football. And talk about your involvement in football, you were saying there, there wasn't many women's clubs when you were growing up, how much has that changed compared to now? Wow, amazing, Uh, absolutely, even from my start at refereeing, like NIWFA, it was like four leagues I think at the time and now we've doubled it, it was like brilliant and even in my, like on the Orm Road where I grew up, there's so many teams. It's, there's more girls and more and more and I think that's down to probably the Northern Ireland ladies as well promoting that too. Have you seen an increase in younger girls maybe going into the referee pathway? Obviously when you first started it wasn't very common for a female to be a ref unfortunately. No and that's a sad case and it's still a sad case as well. Most younger players they want to play, they don't want a referee and then when they get a certain age they want a coach and then everybody goes who wants to be a referee? Why would you want to do that? You know, you get no thanks for it. But that's what I'm trying to promote now, coming through, saying, look, there's a career there for you as well. There's so much opportunity here. We have a FIFA referee and a FIFA assistant, um, female, but there's so much more out there for them if they just kind of try and get them through, try and promote it and say, you know, maybe playing's not for you at this stage, but let's try this. And you definitely, uh, inspiration for them girls. Uh, you mm-hmm. refereed in the Champions League qualifiers. Tell us more about that. Oh yes. <laughs> Back in the day. No, I feel old now because <laughs> it was like 2018. Um, yes, Linfield ladies were involved in that. Waxford, AX. Can't remember the other two. What an experience. Meeting referees from all over the world as well. They had different um, four, four teams. Um, different people who I'm still friends with now. Um, staying in a hotel, being looked after, it was great. No dinners <laughs> making, no washing. It was, yeah. And then it was in um, the night of the dinner. They have like a dinner in the last night and everybody's there. Um, and they give you an award. And they were going through the referees, the different referee teams. And then I got to myself and a girl, Lorna, who was with me. And um, they said my name. And everybody, all the Linfield ones, got up in the chairs and started clapping. and cheering and I mean it was just a really amazing night it was amazing to be part of definitely 
that was obviously a great experience for you to do refereeing like that and obviously with the Linfield players it shows how much you were appreciated but yeah. why is there that stigma around being referee it's not really a popular career path for females or for well, everyone for females yeah your, exactly your path why did many women uh, don't go into it because it was more male dominated you didn't see very very many female teams you know or if you did there was a few girls in among the boys teams and coming through um, it was never really promoted here it wasn't it was just seen that it was a, something that men got into and I didn't mean that and I but um, I would say for me going forward it was a, it was a challenge to me it was like mm, no I can do this and there is more coming through but it's just giving them that something that they can move towards and like traveling and stuff like that that I never got the chance to really travel out of the country so. And you're well established in the top women's league in the country, but is there a difference between refereeing women's football and men's football? Oh, definitely. Yes. Well, yeah, there is. Um, in the way that one, whenever I started refereeing, every men's team that I went to, you know, they were like, "You're doing what? You're who?" You know. Um, then when they got when you got out on the the pitch, it was okay. A woman's telling me what to do. And it was tough going coming through that. But once you kind of speak to them and they'll try to be smart, but you just have to be that bit smarter. And then you gain the respect to be quiet and they get on with it. But the women, no, they have to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. So sometimes to me, it's a bit more challenging too. There's a, that, that bit of difference, but it's how you manage. The, rules, the laws are still the same. The time's still the same. It's how you manage the players, really. So I just do what I can in them 90 minutes. <laughs> Another big career moment for you was you were one of the officials in the President Cup. Obviously, you didn't ref that game. Yeah. Is there a big switch between being an official and being a referee, or do you find it easy? Um, you're part of a team, no matter what you're doing, whether it's an assistant, whether you're a referee, whether you're a fourth official. It's, you're being part of that team. You're making sure that you do your role and you do your job the best you can do so whether it's on the field or off the field to me it's the same you put as much effort into into both you look after your team speaking of that team your partner yeah. is also a referee he is indeed is it hard to work with him or is it easy uh um yeah he would be obviously he was a premiership assistant so whenever he's the assistant with me and the women's um sometimes mark would think he knows more knows better than what i do but yeah, we have ongoing jokes about that. And sometimes on the way home in the car, it's all picture, no sound. But no, we get there. It's all good. I think last week Valerie was on and she was saying she works a lot with her husband, Dee. And she was saying it's hard to have that kind of balance, but they seem to do it well. I did hear, I'm not sure if you will want me to mention this, that he might no. have replaced you in one of the games oh. that you couldn't continue. Surely it was better that it was you know your partner so that it was somebody you knew that was replacing you well true yeah well if he wasn't there you know obviously he was there to support me that night and then um when that happened my calf went and 10 minutes to go when the girl everybody was wanting the game played it was a cup game with the hammer um yeah so we're in the dugout people sat in front of me so i could take my top off and he could put it on it was it was funny but well worth it and then then the game got finished and yeah he saved the day. <laughs> and what is it like refereeing in the women's league? You know, we have Balamina and Lauren coming up this season. Mm. Is that exciting? It is. I think it's great. That's what we were talking to Amy earlier too about this. Um, yeah, more and more. Maybe another two teams coming through. Bring the bring it up. Give us all more of a challenge. Um, Balamina is strong enough team as well. Um, I could ref Lauren a few times as well too and there's some outstanding players there as well looking forward to it i'd say yeah and finally as we wrap this interview up uh what would be your ambition uh for the rest of your career do you have a goal that you would like to see happen oh i was asked at the start of my career where do you see yourself or where would you like to go and i says the referee the irish cup final which i've done so that was the top for me um it sounds wrong but age wise you know i'm there, I'm doing what I do. Um, can't see myself actually, obviously not doing FIFA. Younger ones coming through the IFA, need to put everything into them. Um, for me, I'm going to enjoy 
yeah, the next few years, and then hopefully do more with the women's promoting more females and and refereeing. Amazing, thank you. I don't know about you, but it's so great to hear from a different viewpoint that often isn't heard from. Yeah, I've learned so much. Thank you for joining no us problem. today. And I, I think it's so exciting to show that we're getting people that are refs, people that are players, people that obviously are behind Definitely. the scenes. I'm loving it so far. But anyway, we're a big part of Rachel and my roles in 1880 is to support the next generation of talent in Northern Ireland female football. So. As part of our show today, we thought it would be great to speak to some of Glentoran women's more experienced players for some advice for the up and coming players. Here's what they had to say. I'm 25 now and the things that I know now I wish I knew at 15 because nutrition plays a key role in your energy and how you can apply yourself to performance. So as early as you can. I think it's another key area to be looking after yourself. So I think, you know, eating right and keeping yourself right helps performance on the pitch. So I think it's just right that we start looking after ourselves, you know, and looking at what we eat and performing the best. Um, but to do that, we need to prepare our bodies the best and that's, that's all we can do. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just your responsibility to make sure that you're hydrated and um, fueling your body. That's the most important thing. I think uh, under eating can sometimes be a the biggest concern so just make sure you're feeling your body for training and for matches and it's just whatever makes you feel good. With the growth of social media and the growth of attendances at the women's game we need to be putting out a positive image um, as best possible to influence again in a positive healthy manner to the younger and next generation that are that are coming through uh, for football in this country. I always just be myself on and off the pitch. I don't change um, when I'm with my teammates and when I'm at home with my family. It's, it's very consistent and I think that's the best way to be. Just always be yourself. Learn as much as you can as early as possible. Look after your body and take every opportunity that, that, that comes your way. Um, don't stop trying because I think I mentioned this to you before, my first professional contract was at 24. So, you know, that's quite late on compared to a couple of my friends who were getting them at 17, 18. So those would be the, the pieces of advice that I would, I would recommend. I think it's just about enjoying it. I mean, I've enjoyed every single minute and I'm very lucky still to be playing. I'm grateful for that. But I think the main thing you have to think of is enjoy it first and the rest will take care of itself. Because, again, if you're enjoying what you're doing, you know, you reap the rewards of that. Believe in yourself and um, there's always going to be noise. There's always going to be people saying that you're not good enough. But just if you believe, that's all that matters and you'll have the right people behind you as well. Thank you to Glenn Torn for having us. I think we can both agree that there was some great advice for the younger generation coming through. Definitely. We've now been joined by our second guest, Crusader striker Amy Lee Peachy. Thank you for coming today. We've just heard some great advice there from Glenn Torn. As a young footballer, what advice would you give? Um, I would just say, just go on and enjoy football and just play until you enjoy. And yeah, I just play to enjoy football. Um, as soon as I started kicking a the ball, then that's whenever I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So as soon as you know, you know. That's a good tip. You mentioned there that as soon as you kicked a ball, you enjoyed it. How did you first get involved in football? Well, firstly, I went uh, with my daddy. He used to take Kamuni Colts uh boys and i went and i just started joining the drills but they were older than me so i wasn't allowed to join in the matches unfortunately um but i started doing the drills and started going in and out the cones and that's when i was like oh yeah i actually really enjoy this and my mum and dad were like we definitely need to get you into a team and i said yes but it was hard to find a women's team or a girls team at the time but then my parents news came through in the school and it said come on ladies we're looking like young girls so i went up the try with them and I actually really enjoyed it and then they had a game and it was against Glen Torn and I was like let's do this and then I went and I played and I was striker at this stage and I scored a few goals and then I was like this is brilliant I want to keep going I keep going and from there you moved to Glen Torn um, making your senior debut at 14 what's that like it was mad it was I was 
wasn't even expecting it. I was just sitting in my house and I got a phone call from Gia and she was like, will you play against Nuri? Um, and I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> and uh, she was like, yeah, we need you to play. So my dad was like, this is a good experience. You may just go and enjoy yourself. And I went up, wasn't expecting the start. I was just kind of like, you know, I'll go up, we'll be on the bench. Next minute she's named the team, she said left back. And I was like, I've never played left back in my life. This is going to be awful. But I actually went and I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, got a yellow card that game too. Um, but uh, it was a good experience and it made me feel like, do you know what, I can play senior football. Um, and then from then, I've just been up with the seniors and enjoying it too. You're obviously such a young age. I can't even remember when I was 14. But how did you, you obviously been senior football, how did you keep motivated for that? And how did you like give yourself the motivation and confidence to play with people that were so much older than you? Well, to be fair, it all came from my mum and dad. Like, I was sitting in the house and I was like really debating whether to go out the door. I was like, I don't know if I can do this, I can't do this. And my dad says, listen, they wouldn't have called you up if they didn't think you were good enough. And I was like, I know, but like, they're all gonna be like big grown women and I can't <laughs> play against these women. And uh, they were like, you know, they're, they're girls, the same as you, you know what I mean? They've all been there, done that. Um, Just go and play the way you can play. That's all you can ask of yourself. And I was like, right, okay. So I got my boots and I was like, do I go out this door, do I really? And they were like, my mum kind of just was like, go. And I, and I just went, right, okay. <laughs> so I went out, um, Billy Clark picked me up and then went to the match and I was in the changing rooms, I was like, nervous as anything and all the guards were coming up to me and being like just enjoy it and you know have fun go out and do what you can do but I was like but I don't know any of you since how am I supposed to go out and play I don't even know your name I don't even but they were all so welcoming and they just kind of talked me through it and I had like the experience of Jess Foy in centre half of like talking to me and I had Gail at centre back she played <laughs> and she was talking to me and uh, after that, then about five minutes in, I was just like, right, I've got this. <laughs> so uh, then I just enjoyed it and played the way I could play. And from a young player to now, how much has senior women's football changed? Oh, big time. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, a, it's just the ability of girls coming through and it's just got so much quicker and faster and the girls have got stronger. And I just think it's amazing to see what women's football was then to what it is now in the sense of how it's grown um like no nine women like you wouldn't have really heard of us and now it's like wow do you mean you've went and played against england at wembley as well and you're like do you mean that's where every girl wants to go and be and play so <laughs> it's actually really really good would that be your goal of yours to be one of those northern ireland players that are playing those kind of games um a hundred percent like as I said, I do want to try and get into the Northern team again, but um, it's just working hard and trying to get back in to the team again. Uh, yeah. And you have played at a high level yourself. You made a Champions League squad with Glen Torn. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was really good. Unfortunately, I couldn't play due to my injury, but um, it was a good experience to go over and watch the girls play against them. and the level of Champions League is completely different to what our league is and to go over and I think we did give a good account of ourselves over there um unfortunately we didn't make it through but I thought we could have but um I would say Glen Thorne as a team and a collective would give a good account of ourselves give you a kind of knowing man Obviously you couldn't play in that game, you mentioned you had an injury, mm -hmm. it was obviously completely not your fault. Mm -hmm. Was it very difficult to be watching from the sidelines or did it give you more motivation to come back from that injury and push forward for other things like that? Um, it was a bit of both, like I was frustrating sitting on the sideline watching where I thought maybe, you know, I could have maybe made an impact and helped the team get through, but um, I was just more motivated of do you mean I could be playing there? I need to, you know, try and get myself back at it because I did lose motivation. I did, and it was just because like my hand, my hip, my everything. And I was just like, I don't want to 
I don't even want to play anymore at that stage. But then I was like, no, like I could be your own playing there and people could be watching me play. And I'm like, I want to be playing. So um, it was definitely like one of those ones where I needed to go to get my confidence back, to get um, my motivation back, mm -hmm. definitely. Do you think setbacks have been a big motivation and inspiration on your senior senior journey? Um, a hundred percent. Like, I think I was left out of squads for Northern Ireland when I played for them. Uh, I've been left out of squads of Glenthorne before, and it just made me be a better player, in the sense of I know I have to fight for a position, and whenever I have a challenge, I want to overcome it. So it really made me want to go out there and play more. I think it's something that you've kind of got in common with our first guest, Arlene, obviously <laughs> uh, you were in a car accident and obviously you were hit by a car. Yeah. So you both have really come back from what looked like maybe your careers were over. Mm -hmm. Where is the limit now? Surely the sky's the limit with your career. <laughs> I just take a game as it comes. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be fair, I just don't even think about tackles or anything anymore. I'm just like, do you know what, if I've been hit by a car, I've been hit by a girl, you mean? So I just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and you made the big move last year to Crusaders, scoring 1 0 in your debut. What was that like? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was unbelievable. I um, was, wasn't was like, the ball just came to me, and I was just like, you mean, hit it, hit it. And it was like one of those ones where I, in the moment it took about five minutes of my head, like the actual <laughs> process, I just need to kick it. And whenever I went in and all the guards came and jumped on me, I was like, do you know what, this feels like home. Do you mean like I just needed a new change and I thought Crusaders would do it and whenever I scored and all the girls came hugged me and high fived me I was just like do you want this is family this is home and this is the club I want to be at. Obviously that big move you're now with Crusaders do you have any goals for the season or ambitions obviously I'm a bit nervous for your next game with Arlene <laughs> after you said about the tackle thing so maybe do not mention yellow cards red card giving away penalties but do you have any goals for the season? 100% like um, as a team and a collective we've been training so hard and working so hard for each other that we want to go and we want to achieve at least silverware this year or else win the league which is priority kind of that every club wants to win um, but as a challenge for me I just want to try and make every squad uh, get in and just try and help my team and help our club to go and win something. Will this new structure help you know obviously women are turning professional, Cliftonville have announced, Lenfield have announced, Glen Torn have quite a few as well. Will that help push women's football or will it make it more difficult to win silverware? Hmm. I'm <laughs> it's a touchy subject but I think uh, going professional is a good and forward step for females although I do feel that um, it might cause a bit of I go between teams, although I'm all for getting paid, like, but uh, I just think um, what we're doing as a club, Crusaders, and what we're doing is a good setup at the minute and is the right move that we're making where everyone's equal. Do you know what I mean? And um, we're all pushing towards helping each other, helping our teammates, and we're just working for each other to try and get some silverware. And as a player, have you got like ambitions for the future? Um, I'm just kind of taking it as it comes. Uh, of course I want to play um, over across the waters, but if I don't, then I don't. And I'm happy to stay with Cruz because they're a good family oriented team. Thank you very much, that's great. Oh, nice. Thanks. We're going to take another break here in the studio and go over to Stolichid Stadium to catch up with the defending champions Cliftonville as they prepare for their season. Kelsey, obviously we're here training tonight and the new season is fast approaching. What are your opinions going into it? Um, everyone's really excited and can't wait for the season to start. You know, it's been a long winter for everybody. Um, but everyone's very excited to be back in training and uh, we can't wait for the season to start here in April time. Is there a bit more pressure going into this season? Obviously coming in defending champions. You know, um, all the girls take that in their stride. Uh, a lot of us are used to winning leagues, so we are, but... Um, no, it'll be good for the girls to get back out there and see how we do again this year and there's no pressure on us, we're just going out there to, 
do what we did last year. And one more bonus of this year is the Champions League. What are your opinions going into that one? Yeah, the girls can't wait for the Champions League. You know, it's a different kind of setting for a lot of the girls. And, you know, to be together, either going away or staying here to host it, um, everyone can't wait. And that's what we're preparing for. So we've got the new season coming up. Are you excited? Yeah, we're excited. P pressure, even on us, because we won the league last year. But we'll have to deal with it and get on with it. Speaking of that pressure of winning the league last year, do you think that's something that you'll carry into this season ahead? Yeah, probably, because everybody will be at the beat us. But we love playing games like that, so we're ready. And we've got the Champions League coming up. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I'm one of the youngest in the team, and it's always someone's dream to play in the Champions League, so... Can't wait. Are you excited for the season ahead? Yeah, I think everybody's buzz buzzing. Um, it's a it's a bigger and better season, more teams in the league, um, so more teams to compete with this year. And you're going into this season champions. Is there pressure to that? Uh, no pressure on our side, I don't think. I think there's more pressure on the other teams, um, obviously, to try and compete with us and try and get that number one spot this season. So you've got the Champions League coming up. Is that an exciting experience? Yeah, really exciting. I know um, a good few of our members of our squad have played Champions League before with different clubs, so it'll be even uh, a better test with Cliftonville this year. Thank you to Cliftonville for inviting us to their training. Even though it was one of the wettest and rainiest nights I think both of us have ever experienced, it was still great to get a behind the scenes look and see the girls in action. Well, that's a wrap for our second Northern Ireland women's football show. A huge thanks to our guests Arlene Campbell and Amy Lee Peachy. We'll be back very soon with more coverage of women's football in Northern Ireland. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye from me. And from me, goodbye. goodbye.